SCV, and today's video is going to be a very fun and different one. You're gonna be hearing a bunch of scary, mysterious stories. I'm gonna be telling you the first two, and yes, they're about Beanie Babies. Get ready, buckle your seatbelts. And then our golden ticket winner is gonna be telling you the last two. One of those is her real experience, and the other one is something her dad experienced. Both very spooky, you are not ready. And just to remind you, the reason why I have one of my very lovely subscribers appearing in today's video is because a couple months ago when we launched our Easter mystery boxes, I put three golden tickets amongst them for three lucky winners. One prize was to appear in a Jesse V video, another prize was to get a personalized video from me, and the third prize was to get a signed art piece and letter from me. And so you're about to see Remy, who did find a golden ticket, and she will be in the second half of this video. So congratulations, Remy. And from now on, whenever we have a mystery box launch, there will be three golden tickets hidden somewhere among them. I just think it makes it so much more interesting. Okay, so just quickly before we get started, I just wanted to show you guys that we have some jumbo new furry friends on the website. This is Cash the Sasquatch. And look at his face, he's just so happy. I love his little eyes and oh my gosh, this is the softest thing I've ever felt. I love him. And I really love jumbo plushies because they're just such a statement piece. You can put them anywhere and people are like, oh my gosh, is that a real monster? <laughs> and then of course there is Bigfoot. He is one of my favorites. We've had a bunch of different versions of him, big and small. This is another jumbo one. So if you would like either of these, I put them down below in the description. Alrighty, so let's jump right into today's video. The first story is called The Beanie Baby Incident. This story is told by a woman in her 20s that was looking back on something really strange that happened to her in her childhood. She used to absolutely love visiting her grandmother's apartment, but she swears that the Beanie Babies her grandmother collected were possessed. When she was five, she was sitting on the floor on top of one of her favorite Winnie the Pooh blankets when she heard this very small voice say, We are here. At first she thought that maybe she was imagining things, but then she looked over on the couch and saw that the Beanie Babies were just sitting there. They all stood completely still for a moment, looked totally normal, but then suddenly one of their heads turned towards her and it said, I am the only one like this. I am here and I will get you. So she ran over to her grandma who was in the kitchen making her a snack. She grabbed her hand, pulled her over to the living room, and she just pointed at the beanie baby that was talking to her. Now apparently it was one of the cat beanie babies that was wearing a blue dress. I don't remember that personally, but maybe I can find a picture. At first it wasn't moving, but after a few seconds, once again, it turned its head towards them and started saying, You weren't supposed to tell anyone. This was meant to be our little secret. Now I'll get you both. Her grandmother immediately screamed at this sudden interaction they were having with a stuffed animal. Then the Beanie Baby started to stand up on the couch, but her grandmother grabbed it and ran into the kitchen and cut off its head with a pair of scissors. Now they were stunned to see that when the head came off, actual blood started coming out. So she threw it into a garbage bag and ran it outside to the dumpster. And after that incident, she moved to a much nicer apartment complex near the rest of her family. And whenever someone asked her why she moved, she would just say it was because the rent was too high. But this girl knew the real reason why. And that is the end of this story. Obviously some sort of creepypasta, but it's still very eerie. I remember a few years ago when I did that video about how spider eggs are inside the Beanie Babies. So this story is talking about how real blood is inside your Beanie Baby, which also really freaks me out. Then I found this other story. It's called I See All. It's about this mother who told her daughter Julia that she could choose any store that she wanted to go to for her birthday so she could pick out the exact gift that she wanted. She was dead set on taking home a Beanie Boo because all of her friends had them. Now I think Beanie Boos are like the newer version of Beanie Babies. They have these gigantic sparkly eyes. I remember when I used to work at this craft store called Michael's. They were always on the shelf in front of my register and they would just stare at me all day with these giant eyes. I like remember that vividly. Anyway, they went to the store and she immediately gravitated towards the little owl Beanie Boo because her favorite color was blue and this thing had like a sparkly blue beak. It had giant 
bright blue eyes. It was it was perfect for her. So she took it home and it wouldn't leave her side for weeks. But like most things, that strong attraction only lasted so long and she soon grew very bored of the toy and put it on top of her dresser. But she began to notice something weird happening almost right away. No matter which direction she would place the toy on her shelf or somewhere in her room, it would always end up facing directly towards her, sort of depending on where she was in her room. If she was about to sleep, it was facing her bed. If she was drawing at her desk, it was facing in that direction. If she was on the floor playing with her dog, it was looking down at her. Those giant blue eyes just seemed to follow her everywhere. So one day after being just super creeped out for quite a while, she told her friends about it and asked them if they had the same experience, but they said no. So one of her friends asked if she could take a picture of this Beanie Boo owl. And when she did and sent it to her friend over text, her friend said there was something weird wrong with its eyes. Julia was super confused until she herself looked at the photo. She had used the flash and it had picked up this strange red light coming from inside one of the eyes. And it was weird because it was something that could only be seen using her iPhone camera. So she grabbed some scissors and pried the eye right out of the fur. And when it popped up, she was horrified to see a tiny little camera. So when she told her mom, she obviously contacted the police right away and they went back to the store so they could report it. And the store and the police ended up finding 12 more Beanie Boos with cameras in the eyes. And yeah, that is how this one ended. It actually sounds pretty realistic because stuff like this have happened before. But just as a disclaimer, so this company doesn't come after me, this is just a creepypasta, but it definitely makes you like paranoid about buying like random toys from stores. Or at least it does for me. All right guys, so it's time for me to step aside and let Remy take over for a few minutes. Like I said, she has two creepy stories to tell you and I'm gonna let her run the show right now. Hi, my name is Remy. I'm 14 years old and I am the golden ticket winner. So for today's discussion, I am going to be going over two scary stories, one of which is a creepy experience my friend and me had going trick-or-treating and another one is my dad's from when he was a kid. So the first one was about my friend and me and we were going trick-or-treating and this was average. We would go trick-or-treating every year together and he had a fairly large neighborhood so his neighborhood was the best place for getting the good candy. So we were going to one part of the neighborhood that we'd never really been to before and there was another kid with us, a, a tall kid named Vincent who had on a white derby hat, a plain white mask, a white suit, tie, and shoes. Now Vincent is key in this story. So Carter, which is my friend's name, spotted a house that had no lights on, which if you've been trick-or-treating before obviously means that no one's home or they don't want to be disturbed. But Carter being, well, Carter, he wanted to go up there anyway and say ding-dong ditch the house because that was just what he wanted to do. So he and Vincent went over to the house and I waited there because I didn't want to be caught by the owner. Two to three minutes minutes later we I saw them running back to me and they looked absolutely terrified and they were out of breath and I asked them slowly what was wrong now Carter had responded there was a man there he looked like Vincent only he was dressed completely in black so I didn't believe him. So he and, and Vincent agreed to take me back to where they saw the man. Now they took me to this one little spot behind the car and nobody was there. But right where they said the man was standing when they saw him was a black glove he had been wearing. No other part of him remained. We checked all around the perimeter of the house, nothing. And the second story I'm going to be talking about today was an experience of my dad's when he was a kid. So he was about 10 or 11 at the time and he was going to a sleepover of his friends. Now his friend lived close by and they were in a neighborhood so he and his dad like figured they'd just walk there. While they were walking there, they saw this weird light in the sky and they looked up and all along the sky was this weird shape and it had this bright flashing brighter than any airplane could ever flash its light and airplane lights are always colored this one was just plain white whiter than snow so it just continues goes going on through the sky and then it just takes off and he and his dad kind of stare at each other and his dad says did you see that and my dad said yeah 
What do you think it was? He said, I have no idea, but let's get out of here. So quietly, they walked to his friend's house. Nowadays, my dad thinks that it was a UFO, but this was before any of this stuff about like aliens or Area 51 or UFOs were talked about freely. He was wondering what it was, even though he knew it wasn't an airplane. It was something that couldn't be explained. Well, thank you for letting me take up your time. Thank you again, Jesse, for letting me be on your video. I hope you guys enjoyed my stories and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye. All right, thank you so much, Remy, for telling those two really creepy stories. And once again, congratulations for finding the golden ticket. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you want me to do more stories about nostalgic things or maybe just more mysteries and creepy stories just like Remy told. Don't forget if you would like some of our new jumbo plushies, I have linked it down below. But I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.